in responsive design. Would you believe that 100 lines of code from a junior developer would be equal to a single line of code by a senior developer? The following examples are presented in two ways. 100 lines of code from junior developer and only one line of senior developer. There will be a lot of great tips mentioned, so please be patient and watch the entire video. The times are increasingly developing. There are more and more devices capable of connecting to the internet and accessing websites. However, not all websites can operate when accessed by different devices. Because the design is not compatible with these screen sizes. And this time, responsive design was born. This is a term used to refer to a website that has the ability to self-adjust and adapt on different devices and screen sizes, thereby helping to optimize the user experience. Typically, responsive design uses media queries technology to apply CSS rules based on device characteristics. For example, default CSS properties will be applied to large screen devices such as laptops and PCs. At media only screen and min width and max width. If you want to change the design for a tablet screen, the width size will range from 768 pixels to 1023 pixels. Devices are sized in this range. CSS will be applied in this media-only section. Media only has a size of 767 pixels or less, referring to devices with small screen sizes such as mobile. Similarly, we will have to generate many different media only with different screens. And the number of lines of code can be up to 100 lines when including the code content inside. But, forget it, in this video, I'll show you these 100 lines CSS tips. Become a single line. Note that there will be a lot of tips, so please watch the entire video. In the first example, I will create an element. This element I will paste a text of about 200 characters here. And this is it. By default, for elements that have not declared width, then its width will always be 100%. So if now I want to change its width value, I will use style. Point to the element to edit, and set the value for width to 900 pixels. This means that the width of this element is always fixed at 900 pixels. No matter what device we use, or what screen size. First, if the user accesses using an iPad or tablet device, and you want to reset the value of width, at this time, people will usually use media screens for responsive design. Provided that it will apply to devices with screens smaller than or equal to 1023 pixels. This is the largest position range an iPad has. Now I point to that element and change the width value to 80% of that screen's width ratio. Now everyone can see that this div is only 80%. When users access devices such as laptops and PCs, the width will still be 900 pixels. Only when accessing with an iPad will the size change to 80% of the screen. So let's try to continue shrinking the screen to get to the mobile interface. Also uses media screen technology with max WDITH condition, 767 pixels. So here, I fixed its width to 430 pixels. Okay, so they just spent a lot of lines of code and time just to responsively redesign an element so that it can adapt well on devices with different screen sizes. But, right now, I will transform these lines of code into a single line of code. Now, I create another width here. Use the clamp function. With clamp, the inside will contain three values. Min, value and max with the default value of 900 pixels. The maximum value is 80% of the screen's width ratio, and the minimum value will be 430 pixels. Now I will remove all the code related to responsive design at first, including the initial width set to the media screen code, and let's see if it's possible with just this one line of code. Can replace 10 lines of code when bouncing. At the size of a laptop or PC device, its current width is 900 pixels true to our original default value. This is not difficult to understand. What matters is how smaller devices will change. Try coming to the iPad screen. Its width size is currently 80% of the width of this screen. But why is it possible to understand this logic? Consider the following analysis using the clamp function. Clamp's rules for parameters are as follows. If the default value is 900 pixels, the maximum value is 80% screen width. 
First, we need to convert these two values to the same unit for comparison. Because this screen has a width of 1000 pixels, so max will be equal to 800 pixels. By default, the value of width will always be equal to the default value. But if this default value is greater than max value, then the value of width will be equal to the max value. That's why, in this case, our element has a value of 80% of the width of the screen. Now, let's continue to the mobile screen, with screen width of 500 pixels. Looking at it normally, it is not difficult to realize that this element has a width of 430 pixels. Because it only has a little space left over here. So how does it understand and receive this value? Let's continue analyzing what's left in the clamp function. According to clamp regulations, default has a value of 900 pixels. Max is 80%. On a screen with a width of 500 pixels, then the value of max is 400 pixels. Follow rules. Because default is greater than max, width will be equal to max. However, in clamp there is also a min parameter, with value 430px, with conditions, if the value selected in the previous step is less than the value of min. Then finally, width will be set to the value of min. So from now on, when users access using devices with large screen sizes, its width is always 900 pixels. For smaller screens like the iPad, it will be 80% of the width ratio of that screen. And finally when accessing on mobile, the width of this element will be 430 pixels. It's great, right? With just this single line, it was able to do a good job of being responsive no matter how many lines of code it had. But please pay attention, we still have the following problem. Is the minimum value this element is set to 430 pixels? So what if we access it with a device with a screen smaller than this size? Then it will break. To solve this problem, at the first parameter of clamp, I use min function. Inside there are two values 430 pixels and 100% screen ratio. Then the previous error has been fixed. Its principle is as follows. When accessing by mobile device, the system will always set the width to 430 pixels. But if that device has a screen smaller than this value, then we set the width of the element to 100% of the width of that screen instead of 430 pixels. So we solved another problem. And still with just one line of CSS. Next will be the second example. Related to column division. This is an important issue and I believe it will be extremely useful. Also will follow the rule of turning many lines into a single line. I will create a class list. Inside there are five elements numbered in different numbers and colors for easy identification. And this is it. To divide columns. In style, I point to the class list that declares display, grid. I want to divide the inner child elements into five equal columns. Each column has a width of 200 pixels. It worked. Nothing will happen until users access it using devices with smaller screens. Like iPads. Take a look at the last column. Its width has been reduced by half because this screen cannot accommodate all five columns. And even when intentionally making it smaller, the number of columns is lost even more. Normally, at this time, people will often use media screens in combination with specific conditions to edit responsiveness. For example, if you want to edit for an iPad, the max width will be 1023 pixels. In this range, the elements in the list will be divided into four columns instead of the original five columns. It went down the line and divided into four columns. Continue to shrink the screen to simulate a mobile device. At this time, the last column continues to lose part of its width value because this screen does not contain enough. So we continue to have to use media screen with the condition of max width 767 pixels and split the elements into three columns instead of four. This is the most common way to do it. However, it is very cumbersome. We have to spend too much time and effort on this responsive column division. So let's delete everything and refresh the logic. Because we only need one line of code. No need for media. Where the column division is by default. Instead of fixedly choose five columns in a row. Then I will assign a new value of autofill. The second parameter will still be 200 pixels. That's all it takes. Let's see the results. The principle of autofill in grid is that it will not limit the number of columns in a row. As long as there is enough space, there will still be more columns. Provided that each column is always 200 pixels. 
If that row is not enough to contain an additional column of this size, that column will automatically go to the second line without us having to think about being responsive. It's great, right? Above are two examples I want to share with everyone to turn really long lines of code into a single line of code with CSS. I still have a lot of things to share, and will continue to share them in the next video. If you find the video interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to follow upcoming videos. Thanks everyone. See you again in the next video.